So you might have seen the Apple keynote yesterday and outside shiny iPhones, a cool thing they showed is this intro animation. So let's recreate it in Houdini today. Let's think about how we wanna create this. So first of all, we wanna have the logos in a vector. Then secondly, we wanna expand that logo to the side. So we have a bit of geometry. Then we wanna scatter some points on that logo. And then we wanna displace them into the Z axis. So how do we go around this in Houdini? First of all, let's drop down a geometry node, call it logo or whatever you wanna call it. Let's import a vector. If you don't know how to do this, I'll link up a tutorial that Antagma did on importing vectors into Houdini. And let's load it up. So as you can see now, it's a bit random. Two ways to center this to the stage. One is labs axis align and then set it to the center. Because it's space, I want it in the center and not on the floor. Or alternatively, if you don't have labs installed, what you can do as well is just hook up a transform node and then just move centroid to origin. Both will do the same trick really. So after this, let's see what our points look like. And you can see they're quite irregular. So a way to sort this out is a resample node. This will just redistribute the points along the line. So what we can do is we can lower the length of every segment and to something like this looks quite good, I think. And what we can then do is sweep the line in order to create that extruded geometry. So first of all, let's pipe in the first slot, the backbone curves. And then we have to pipe in whatever we want to extrude it with. I just want to extrude it with a line on the x-axis. And if I plug this in, you can see we get a very extruded shape now. But if we dial back the length, you can see it's a lot smaller. And secondly, because the normals are inverted, we can reverse them by just laying down a reverse note. So now we get a black color, which makes it impossible to see. So we can either set the color with a color note, or because we already have a color value, we can also delete it. And that way we don't import the color value. So we can delete it from the primitive and look at the same results in this occasion. So now you can see we have some extruded geometry. It's a bit too big. So I think it's dialed down like a bit more. And we can maybe drop down a null now just to make it easy as an overview. So maybe let's say sweeped logo. So this is a starting point. So what we want to do now is lay down a scatter node just to generate points on the object we just created. We can leave the total count like this for now and maybe we dial back after this. And we can disable the grid, it's a bit distracting. So now you can see we have the Apple logo. And basically what we want to do with this is first of all, we, we want to get rid of this perfect line. We want to displace these points outwards. Then what we want to do is displace the points in the Z axis, so give them some depth. So first of all, let's displace them outwards, which I find is the easiest by laying down an attribute randomize. And I don't want to randomize the CD value, which is the color. I want to randomize the P value, which is the position. And because the operation is set to set value, I want to like supply the value. And the minimum value should be one. So they stay in their place. So set them all to one. And if I then up the value, you can see the logo will start expanding outwards. So now we create a bit more of a randomized logo. And in order to displace them in the Z axis, we need to lay down another node because if you think about it, because we multiply and these points are exactly at zero. So zero times anything is zero. So whatever value Z here won't displace. So it's easier to just do it with another node, which we can do with attribute noise now. You can also use a randomize here, but I just find noise works quite well for this. And if we set this to P again, you can see it is quite random. But if we hit the amplitude button and we hit the X, Y, Z to separate the values, we can set the X and the Y to zero. So those will stay in the same place. And then we can just displace the Z axis. The element size is really big now. So you can see you have these really big kind of noisy values, but you want to set it to something rather small. So they're like very randomly displaced. So this works a bit better, I think. You can still kind of still see the logo. So. Let's finish this basic setup first and then make the logo a little bit more defined because it's a little bit hard to see at the moment. So this is the, we can attach a null to this and we can say like out point cloud maybe. And the next thing, if we actually want to create geometry on this, 
we need to copy some geometry to the points. So let's attach a copy to points node. And if I attach the sphere now, it'll be very big. First of all, set it to primitive, so your machine will be able to handle this. Then widen, and you can see, yes, we have massive spheres. So again, let's add an attribute randomize. And this time we wanna randomize the p-scale value, which is a one dimension value, it's a float. And what I wanna do is I wanna set this to a custom ramp because I wanna have a couple that are quite big, but then the rest should be like a bit smaller. So maybe let's set this to 0 0.01. So that's the size of the biggest ones you can see here. And then something maybe like a quarter of the size. It's up to you, maybe, maybe one eighth. And yeah, that's quite nice as well. And what we can now do with this ramp is first, if I shift select all these anchors, I can set it to B spline. And what I wanna do now is I wanna drag this out. So as you can see, and I can drag the value down. So now we create this nice ramp where we only have a couple of like big ones, but most of them are quite small, which is kind of what I want for this. And because I remapped the zero to small value, these points won't disappear. So it's quite a nice way of working. And then lastly, you can attach an attribute randomize again for the color, or you could do it with a color node, which is maybe a bit easier. So we can just say, give it a random ramp from attribute and we could set it to the p value so the position in space and then we could just say maybe go from like a bluish color to look at the reference like a light bluish color to like mainly this you could change the interpolation for this as well so you could set it to a constant so some would just be that kind of bluish color and then some will be more like white and you could extend the range a bit as well so yeah it's kind of like whatever works for you I think actually a attribute randomize might work better in this case. And then and then remap those CD values in the color node because these will go from zero to one. So you can actually make some nicer randomized colors. Okay, so we now have colors, we now have the right scale. And the thing that I think currently is really lacking is kind of like a, a layer where the logo shows really clearly. So kind of like an outline, like this is more like stars floating in space but you also want an outline that really outlines the logo. So it's very clear when you see it. If we look back at the um, animation, you can see there's a very clear logo that you can see here. So I want to create that outline of particles, which I can simply do by picking up from a reverse note. So from here, I can add another resample to get the accurate polygon count that I want for this specific case. So I could set it to the same value. I could set it a bit lower, maybe something like this. And what I can do now is you can see there's still a polygon like active in the middle. You can see it by the specular reflections. So I can just add an add node and I say delete the geometry, but keep the points. So this, this geometry will be gone and we just have the points left. And then what I can do again, like before, I just have an attribute randomize again where I'll randomize the p-value, but ever so slightly. And here again, I wanna multiply and I wanna keep this to one, that to one, and that to one. And then I wanna multiply them ever so slightly, just a tiny bit. So now you can see, we still have a really clear Apple logo and that would just help with the readability of this animation. And again, I can just copy the attribute noise we have here to do the same trick on the z-axis and this could be slightly less, like this is a bit too extreme for this case. So we can dial down maybe even more, just as a little bit of randomness and doesn't have to be a lot. And now you can kind of play with what amount of geometry you want here, maybe slightly less and how far you want to displace it. And again, we want to randomize the color values of this. So here, maybe we could say out, out sweep logo, just to keep organized. <laughs> That's a lot of notes. And this I can merge back into this one so we can do the skill and the CD operation at the same time. If I select these two, I hold Alt and I click on the dot. You can see we get this dot in the middle. So what I can do now is click and we'll have a merge node and we just reconnect this. So these are merged now and then they will both have the P skill value randomized and that's it. Now you can see we have this random logo and what you can see is the Z axis is very displaced. So I kind of want to control that a bit. So again, I'm going to add a remap attribute here and I want most of them 
to not go too far in the distance. So you can still see it's like a logo. And then some of them can be displaced a bit further. So again, we want to set this to a B spline. So we get a nice interpolation. And now you can play with this other one to see how you exactly want it. So you can have them like mainly here, or you can have them out like that, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can play with the value as well. So I think this is a quite nice way of working. And then it's kind of like playing with however you want it. Like what you can see now is with this one, it doesn't really feel like it connects that well with the rest. So you probably want a bit more displacement like this. And our logo is still very visible. So that's a good sign. And we'll attach a null to this and we can say out stars. And then you want to create a camera. And because it goes from the center and we want to kind of want to rotate. So we have a star cloud first. We want to rotate and then we want to zoom in kind of through the logo. So in order to do this, I find it easiest to have a null in the middle of the scene. And because we centered the logo, this will be at the center of the logo. Then attach a camera to it. And now you can see it's right there. And if we get our toolbar here, we can just pull it back or we can just do it in this tab. And I think with these animations, the higher your focal length is, the easier you can see the logo. So I'll show you when I go into my camera, now you can see the logo is visible enough actually. But if I increase the focal length to say something really high like 500 and then go back, you can see now it's a very clear logo because we lose the sense of depth in the scene, which therefore increases the flatness of this composition. And therefore you can see the logo a lot better. So if I would do this animation, I would play with the focal length for sure, just to create a nice illusion of depth. But the issue you get with it is that if you zoom in, this is also really flat and not very interesting. So I think when you animate this in, you want to play with the vocal length and start animating that as well. So let's add a few keyframes. Let's maybe start with a relatively high focal length of 200. So it's still very graphical. And then zoom in, maybe this is a nice composition for when we get around the corner. Then the first thing we want to do is rotate around the Y axis. So you can see we have kind of like this point cloud. I think maybe minus 30 works, maybe 35, it's up to you. We don't have to do exactly what they did in the keynote. Then you want to set this to zero. If you control middle click, it will stack to the default value. And now you can see we have this animation. And now at the same time, what you want to do is we want to zoom in. So in order to do that, we animate the Z translate on the camera. And I want to give it like maybe 150 frames. I figured out that works quite well. And so at the end of this animation, I want to be somewhere like here. Maybe at zero. We might have to tweak it uh, later on. And now you can see we have the basic animation, but it's a bit dull. So what you want to do is you want to go into your animation editor. Okay, there I got it. And basically you want to set a few keyframes. So first of all, you don't want it to zoom like constantly around here. Also, the rotation ends quite abruptly, which is just a bit ugly. It feels like it's not one complete animation. It's kind of like two separate animations. So what you could do is at frame 75, if we alt click, we'll set another keyframe. And then we just drag this keyframe down ever so slightly. So we keep a bit of movement in that rotation angle. So we can see the logo, but it slowly like animates in. I find that has a bit of a nicer movement. And you have to find a balance here between legibility of the logo and rotation speed. I think we want to do the same as well for the zoom in effect. So maybe around frame 50, you definitely want to set these at the same like frames. You want to drag this up a bit so you can see the logo. And then I want to animate the focal length as well. So let's get into here. Like maybe let's start with 200 and then at 150, we'll have something a lot lower, maybe like 80, maybe go 50. This is like, we have to experiment. I think we can go to 50 actually. Like if I go here and then drag it down. Yeah, maybe even like 36. You can see it really comes to life, the logo. Like it really, it kind of like it zooms in a lot nicer. It's It just works a lot better, I find. So again with this, because now it feels like we're pulling back and then going in. That could also be a look you're going for, but that's not what they did. So what you could do here, is to set another keyframe, do the same trick as we did before. Control H will just zoom into your timeline and then maybe do something like this. And now you can see 
if we play the animation, we see the Apple logo and we kind of zoom in through these stars and then we're in a new scene. So the last thing you can do as well to make this really come to life is for these Z displacements, we can multiply them by a value. So if I go on my geometry and I create an extra slider to do this. So I'll get into here and here we can see all the folders we can see here. So we have transform, render and misc. And I'll create a new folder and I'll call it controls. So we can drop our custom things down here. And I attach a float into it and I call this Z depth, Z depth. And I accept and I set that to one because I want to multiply this. So if it's one, it will stay the same because anything multiplied by one is the same. So when I copied this value, copy parameter, and I then go in and then in our attribute noises, what I want to do is keep this value and then multiply it by paste relative reference. So whatever reference will be in there, it will be multiplied by it. Currently it looks the same because again, things multiplied by one is the same. And then here, paste the reference. And what we now can do, so say for here, we want to keep it quite graphical, not too much contrast. But then when we zoom in, we really want to get this star kind of effect. So if we then multiply it, you see these stars will start moving out, which is quite a nice effect for this. So let's set a keyframe and maybe at frame 50 for this one and bring up our animation panel again. Go to frame 150 and then maybe make this three. So if three times more depth than we normally would have. And I just see how this looks. I think it create quite a nice effect. And if you want to see how a high value would work, you can just drag this value up and maybe that works even better. And if we just play this back now, you can see we get this nice kind of star effect and we're in a new scene. So lastly, you can add some clouds to the side, which would be a very similar process as what we've done with the logo. So just be, oops, I don't want to parent this. <laughs> stars it'll just be a grid and we only need two rows and two columns because we don't need any extra geometry if i hit Control f we can see this is it we on the wrong plane so this is the plane we want it's way too big as you can see so let's scale it down a bit to something that's like i mean maybe twice the logo or something like again this is up to your own taste but what i then want to do is i want to transform it and then mirror it so we have them on both sides just because I'm lazy, it makes it a bit easier to do it that way. And then if we transform it, you can see we get these planes outside the logo. I hope that's visible through YouTube, but here's all the points. And otherwise where you see this axis will be the logo because it's the center of the scene. And what we then want to do is we want to scatter some points on this. Then we can just do our same trick again. So we could just attribute randomize all the points, the P value, and we want to add it to it. Add value, just so we get a bit more randomness. So maybe like this, turn off point display. And then it's kind of like fiddling around however you want it. So I feel a bit too far to the logo on that side. So I can just move this over like a little bit, maybe something like that. And then maybe down a little bit as well. Then let's see from a camera perspective. You can see there's just a bit more clouds. So you're actually in space and not just, just in an Apple kind of universe. And you could just copy and paste the color and the skill value and the spheres from here. And then you have it all in one scene. And that's it. There you are. So now you have your own Apple <laughs> Keynote star animation. I hope this was useful. Please leave in the comments if it was useful. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.